and welcome to Diverse and Inclusive Leaders, the podcast show where I interview the most inspirational and thought-provoking leaders of today and unearth their unique stories of diversity and inclusion to help inspire, educate and motivate others to make the world a better place. Today, I'm absolutely honored to be joined by the fantastic Alice Choi. Alice is the Chief Operating Officer at McCann Health Medical Communications, where she's the Executive Director for the Health and Scientific Council. I'm delighted to be speaking with Alice today because she's had an absolute wealth of experience, least of all within the medical field, but also as a really inspirational leader, She's been nominated for a whole host of different awards, including the Northern Power Women, where she was listed as the top 50, uh, one of the top 50, sorry, women leaders, as well as the Pharmaceutical Marketing Europe, or PME, for those who are in the know, as one of the top 25 female leaders in UK healthcare. She's recently chaired and currently does a number of different organizations, including healthcare organizations and not-for-profit organizations as well. And she had a really, really interesting cultural career as well. So very, very keen to be speaking with her about that today. So Alice, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Layla. Delighted to be with you. It's great to have you on the show. And Alice, for, for all of our listeners who are at home who haven't had the joy of meeting you in person as I have, it would be great just to hear a little bit about what you've been up to recently and some of the current projects that you're working on, you know, would they be at McCann or one of your other directorships? Um, and, and just give us a, a quick summary of, you know, I guess, how you've come to be where you are today. So um, there's a lot in there. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a whistle stop tour of how I came to be where I am today. And then I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm doing at the moment. So in terms of how I came to be where I am, I had quite an academic background to begin with. So I did my um, BSc in pharmacology, master's in clinical pharmacology, and then a master's in public health and eventually doing a PhD in epidemiology. Um, very um, quite intense academic rigor involved there but then I realized um, that probably staying in academia wasn't really for me and I would probably end up being quite a mediocre academic if I did so I decided to try something a bit more commercial in nature but at the same time I didn't want to lose my science background So that's how I entered the one, well, I guess it's a wonderful weird world if you don't know it, of um, medical communications. So it's quite a niche specialist area of, um, of, I guess, pharmaceutical activities. But basically, um, it involves um, a lot of um, communication and scientific rigor. And it's our job to help our clients who are by and large um, pharmaceutical, global, um, big companies to really help communicate their product data to healthcare professionals in a really robust and evidence-based way. So um, it's, it, it is a niche field. There are um, quite a few of us involved. Surprisingly, Macclesfield, where I'm currently based, is one of the centers of excellence for this field. So that's kind of a whistle-stop tour of how I ended up where I am. Fantastic. In terms of what I'm doing today, I'm still involved in, in the field of medical communications. So I currently work, as you mentioned before, at McCann Health Medical Communications, which is part of the McCann Health and wider McCann World Group and then Interpublic Group Network. So I'm um, one of the largest networks um, specializing in marketing and communications. So I think the one thing that really unites us where we are is that we're really passionate about good quality science um, and communicating it in such a way that really makes a meaningful difference. And and that meaningful difference is ultimately to the patient and their carers and families. Absolutely. So So now you sit on a number of I know you sit on a number of boards as well, um, and I didn't mention, um, you know, to our listeners who, who are tuning in, that you're also a mentor for the CRUK Women of Influence programme, in addition. Yes, yeah, so um, I obviously quite, you know, I, I do feel passionately about my day job, but um, 
I like to stay engaged with the community and um, I really like to learn new things and meet new people. So I guess what I've done is I have effectively job loaded and taken on quite a few extracurricular things. So the thing that you mentioned just then, um, I am a, a mentor for the Cancer Research UK's Women of Influence programme. And that's been phenomenal. I've had the opportunity to mention, um, sorry, to mentor um, a couple of really amazing research scientists um, currently um, working with the CRUK and they are doing amazing work. So that's been a real privilege. One of the other things that I do that I feel passionately about, just because it's such an amazing organisation, is I'm um, currently one of the governors for the Christie NHS Trust. So absolutely fabulous centre, one of the largest European oncology treatment centres and some people may have heard of it because it's the first centre in the UK that's offering proton beam therapy treatments at the moment. So that has been an amazing privilege as well to, um, to work with the exec, non-exec team and the other governors there. Wow, so it's really quite multifaceted, everything that you're doing right now. When you were saying that multi-beam technology, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I have no idea what Alice is talking about there. Um, but that's absolutely brilliant. And I guess just, um, just stepping back a little bit into kind of your personal background, would it be really, really interesting to, to kind of, to, to perhaps delve into a little, and maybe if you didn't mind to share with our listeners, a bit about your kind of your personal background, your 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 heritage and, and, and things like that. Because of course, you know, I've had the chance of meeting you in person, but you know, you've of course from Asian descent, had a really interesting cultural background as well. And it would be great to great to hear a bit more about that too. So as you mentioned Layla, I am of Korean descent. Um, anyone who has any Korean friends or knows Korean families um, can probably understand now why um, I have such an academic background. Um, anyone who has Korean parents is totally going to be pushed in the academic direction. Um, so yeah, I come from a very traditional well, I would consider a traditional Korean family. But at the same time, even though I didn't stay within academia, um, which is, I think, maybe what my parents, grandparents may have been hoping for, they've been very supportive along the way. Um, in terms of other personal circumstances, um, as you know, I think I've mentioned this to you, but my pride and, and joys are my three daughters. So I have three teenage daughters, um, who are aged 20, 17 and 15. So having all the joys of adolescence with, with them. But I have to say that they've been a real pleasure and actually directly and indirectly, they've influenced a lot of my career choices and how I choose to do things. So um, that's a snapshot of me. The only other um, point of relevance to note is that um, I'm married to Phil, big Geordie guy who many of you will probably sympathise with when I um, tell you that he's a Sunderland supporter. <laughs> so that has very little to do with his I love it and it's so interesting as well because you know and again I, you know I know that we've already mentioned that you're obviously nominated as one of the, the, the top 50 females, Northern Power women, um, you know, it is quite unusual that there is, um, you know, a, an Asian lady business leader at COO level. Now, of course, you know, when you've been growing up, like you said, you know, you've really been pushed towards that academia side and gone into the commercial side. You've got these kind of multiple board level advisory um, charity positions. Do you think that is do you think that's a product of your cultural upbringing? I've always been very driven to learn, as I said, and, and um, make actions, learn new things, be exposed to lots of different thinking. Um, I, I'm sure that some of that may stem from having been pushed academically. Um, but I think I just have a natural curiosity about life and people and things, which I think a lot of people either tend to have or or don't have and I would say that it's that natural curiosity that has really pushed me along really. Interesting and do you think it has been you know a, a positive 
influence now that you are at board level? In terms of having that curiosity and tenacity and desire to learn, I, I think one should absolutely have that as a trait. I'm actually really lucky because people often ask about that whole gender issue and you know is a gender bias and do you feel that you've had to work harder as a woman to mm -hmm. progress to the levels that I'm at and actually I've been really fortunate the organization that I work in and um, actually we're predominantly female workforce with um, I want to say about 70% female so I've been really fortunate in that respect of um, hopefully being judged on merit rather than any gender issues. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's really, really interesting you say that because I speak to a lot of really kind of high powered females and, you know, I would say probably it's 50-50 split, you know, 50, you know, 50% would probably say, you know, that they just, you know, they really just purely want to be, um, you know, judged on skill, on on merit, that, that they've never really thought about it all that much. And then the other, um, you know, kind of quite open about the fact that it's been really, really, really tough. Um, you know, do, do you think it's kind of, I don't know, is it is it like a, you know, personality kind of trait that, that you know you've always been confident and kind of just um, you know focused on that kind of the, the core skills and making sure that you um, you know you just don't take notice of what it is that's around you um, and just keep keep pushing on I guess up and to the board. I think it's fair to say that I am quite focused but I think anyone's progression there is a mixture of focus and there's a mixture of fortune as well and, and the other big component for me is that you have to be within the right culture and value set wherever you're working because mm -hmm. if you don't feel that you're surrounded by the right values then you're just not going to be happy and you're not going to progress so for me it's a mixture of all of those things and I, and I do think um really just to give them a call out some of the work that's going on particularly in the northwest you know some of the work that um they're doing with with the northern power women and and all of that I think that's quite eye-opening work that I think is really pushing us all forward and I think it's also helping um we as women to collaborate more and raise some of these issues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, have you found, you know, having these multiple posi positions that it's been difficult to, to perhaps get that, that kind of that work life balance? Because that's another thing that I hear a lot. It's kind of, you know, how can I get up to this C-suite level as a woman or, you know, be an ethnic minority or, or, or someone from, from one of the various different, um, you know, diverse communities um, trying to actually get to where you are because they're having to, um, you know, deal with more of the stereotypical kind of roles at home, you know, and, and looking after family and things like this. So that is a struggle and um, and I think it's a bit of a universal struggle as, mm. as well or whatever level you're at if you're a working mother um, sometimes it is really hard to juggle so you know as we said before I think focus is really important but I think the most important thing I would say to anyone is really just to be pragmatic and and think carefully about the decisions you make um, you know make it as easy on yourself as as possible so you know for example advice i've given to people um is even you know i've had discussions with people where they say oh you know my husband and i are going to have children i work here and mm -hmm. um, he works there and we're going to live in the middle and even simple things like well actually if you live in the middle then both of you are going to be equally far away from your childcare, from your child. So even make pragmatic choices about you, where you live, build as many networks as you can around you because having that network of friends and family around to help with children when they are going to be ill, which they will be. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's about making practical choices. And the final thing is when things don't go as you want, then just don't beat yourself up about it. But I do think that's where if you are fortunate enough to have the choice, choosing a company that is supportive of that and has the right culture and value set, because it, it's a two-way give and take thing. It shouldn't always be a take-take thing. So that's my view on, on how to do your best to get the right work-life balance. It's not always possible and inevitably people have times where they think it's not working. But I think 
just be as pragmatic as you can is my advice and have the you know because i think it'd be easy looking from the outside and thinking oh my god nurse alice has done all these amazing things how's she done it she's got three kids you know have there been any times where you've had particularly difficult conversations or you've had a challenging time that you've had to kind of overcome you know and how have you managed to do that for everyone who's kind of listening today thinking well um you know it's uh you know i've got this issue and oh my goodness it's it's not that easy for me to be trying to progress up to these next levels when i've got such and such to deal with so i've been you know as i said i have been really fortunate in my career and how i have progressed i think one of the challenging things that we all face and again i think that this is really universal is that there is always a difficult conversation to be had whether it's about something very small or whether it's about something really significant and i find even now when i look around um there's a real reluctance for people to give and also receive feedback in a constructive way um, so I'm not obviously talking about a monumental challenge that I've had per se but I, I do think that in some of those smaller challenges and maybe you know some of the things that keep you awake at night I think if people can find mechanisms to be more open and constructive in their feedback and also in how they receive it, I think that would really go a long way. And that can only happen by example as well. You need to see that come top down from an organization. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of ensuring, like you said, that the, the, the business, the organization is fostering that right culture, being able to be as open and honest and as transparent as possible. Absolutely. I, I can't emphasize enough how important that cultural and value set piece is, because without that, when you do encounter those career challenges or issues, you know, you're going to really struggle to address them unless you are working somewhere where you feel you can be open in your feedback and know that it will be received as it was intended. Absolutely. And I guess it sounds you know like everything that you're doing certainly at McCann you know it's a very inclusive culture you know what does what does diversity and inclusion mean to you personally so for me personally um diversity and inclusion um really means proactively and not just paying lip service to it but actively wanting to do this as well is um to really proactively seek out the broadest range of inputs opinions and thoughts as you can no matter who they come from and actually the more different the better and once you have sought those people those inputs those thoughts is really to continue that inclusion process and make sure that everyone remains engaged and and has a seat at the table I think that one thing that some of us, in fact, I'm sure all of us at some point are guilty of is that whole unconscious bias where you gravitate to like minded people and they gravitate towards you, which is great. But that doesn't always give the best, most creative, most viable solution longer term. No, do you know, you're so totally right. And it's so easy to do. I think. You know unconscious bias training is fantastic but it has you know there's various research studies that have been done now that say we all have got biases it's just like you say reminding ourselves actually that we have those biases and trying not to um you know go into um into those um those patterns where we're making presumptions i guess and you know you mentioned the piece there as well about about group think and making sure we don't have group think you know I couldn't agree more, you know, but it's so easy to kind of, I don't know, recruit in our own shadow and feel, you know, second you feel you have similarities with another person, you know, you kind of feel like, right, you know, that's great. I'm just going to share and be able to talk to them more so, um, which, you know, I guess is 
you know, whilst it's only natural, you know, we've got to have that, that diversity of, of thought, like you say, to, to make sure we have more well-rounded perspective and, you know, I guess innovation is bred. Absolutely. And um, I think diversity absolutely is illustrated by, you know, if you are going to get the same type of people together, then you're always going to get the same kind of result. And again, that's not what you want to do to progress and change and evolve and build for the future. So I think it's a massively important issue. And it's great that it's finally coming to the fore and, and being highlighted. I think so. And I think, and that's why, you know, initiatives like Northern Power, that you mentioned, they're just so important. You know, I think role models, especially for our youth, for your girls and, you know, for, for children or, or kind of, um, you know, those who are young into their career, having people they can aspire towards that might look or sound like them is just so, so important. You know, and, and I've said this to you before, and you know, I'm sure hopefully it doesn't sound too weird to all of our listeners who aren't watching the YouTube channel and actually listening to the podcast itself. Um, you know, but, but I'm also Chinese and, um, well, Asian as well. And when I, when I first met Alice, you know, I just rarely get to meet many Asian ladies who are in senior positions and so for me it's really it's it's exciting you know it's great because when I have been going throughout this you know wonderful world of business and trying to make it in you know interviews and past and and, and of course um, you know now starting up various businesses I just don't see many many leaders or women even who look or sound anything like me and so I've kind of had to find my own way and the more and more people I speak to and you know the, the, I do quite a bit of speaking now in colleges and some of them will come over and say oh you know it's great to get great to hear from you because it'd be great if we saw more people who like us or lot, lots of the time the people that they they do aspire towards tend to be people that look or sound like them and I think it kind of gives you that confidence that you know if you know say Alice is there as, a, as an Asian lady on the board you know what I can do it and I think you know that's what others from various communities whichever their differences are you know will look up there look at leaders and think you know what maybe I can do that and I can have the confidence because you know there's role models out there who who are similar. Absolutely and I always try and encourage my daughters and I really want them to think that they can do absolutely anything they can achieve, anything they want to. But I think the other thing that I always try and instill in them is you can do what you want to, but it's going to take a lot of hard work and, and determination. Absolutely. Oh, go on, sorry. No, the other thing that I have found and um, that I've been doing um, recently that I have found very personally enriching, and it goes back to that comment about diversity, and um, you can probably imagine in, in my world professionally, Layla, um, I am exposed to um, a lot of healthcare um, sectors and pharmaceuticals, but one thing that I've been doing recently has been um, working with the Marketing Manchester team. I sit on their mm -hmm. internationalization and marketing and advisory board, and that has actually been fantastic for me because um, I've been exposed to totally different sectors mm -hmm. from the Northwest. So, um, going back to that thing of, of learning new stuff and meeting new mm -hmm. people and just embracing more diversity that that has been really super so I think that that diversity comes in lots of different forms doesn't it not just about about gender or or ethnicity but even things like different learnings and backgrounds it, it's just been super absolutely and and that's the thing I think you know and I often go into kind of board meetings or, or go to business meetings and and you know when I mention diversity often not being biased at all often to 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 males um you know, they'll go oh diversity um again I can I can see the cog working in their mind and it's like actually you know the great thing about diversity and inclusion is is it's it fills so many different it, it, it encompasses so many different things like I said it is skill sets it's background it's um you know different countries you know it's mindset you know it's all of these different types of things you know it isn't just um age race socioeconomic background etc etc so no you're totally right totally right um you know, and i guess moving on just to another couple of couple of questions that i had um you know i wondered kind of what is authentic leadership to to you so for me this is this is 
quite a simple one and, and I have a really simple but very basic answer it's literally about just being yourself and not trying to masquerade your true self or position yourself as being something different um, because I think ultimately it always comes through and I think it's also by leading by example which I know is a really old cliche but I think you really have to behave and, and treat others as you would hope to be treated yourself so really simple but basic answers and if you were to give your younger self or your three girls who I'm sure look up to you a huge amount and asking you about what they're going to do in their future you know what is there any advice that you kind of impart or anything you wish you would have told yourself when you were younger oh the big thing that I would tell my younger self is um don't stress about things don't worry about the future and what might happen don't worry about things that you can't control just focus on on what you can because i, I do think that um many of us um do sweat about stuff that that is out of our control so that's certainly what i would um tell my younger self and um i'd tell my daughters that when they're inclined to listen so um absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so don't sweat the small stuff basically absolutely and and just don't stress because there are so many variables that you can't control just look at the ones that you can absolutely you're all right life's too short and i think it's so easy to to get caught up and wrapped up in you know politics of small things you know you, you know when you do look at the bigger picture actually um you know right try and stress less and i guess do more really um absolutely. And I guess finally, you know, have there been any specific inspirations that, that you have had throughout your life, any sheroes or, or kind of heroes that have really impacted where you've got to today? I think there are um, sources of information that I go to for inspiration. Um, for example, I um, often will take a look at um, things like the um, what's happening with the UN Women's Organization, because there are so many inspirational stories um, there about um, women who really kind of fought for basic rights and, and, you know, continue to fight adversity. So although not one specific person, I think there are so many inspirational stories out there um, about, um really heroic women and, and people who are really fighting for just basic rights i often do take inspiration from my um three daughters and as i mentioned to you earlier a lot of the career choices that i have made um i've done either directly or or indirectly because of them and that phrase from the um from the mouth of babes sometimes they will um on rare occasion i hasten to add um they'll come up with something quite wise and, and profound that will make me stop and think as i said it's a relatively rare occasion um and then i think there are lots of other classic female um role models um you know like you michelle obama's of the world um you know like um melinda gates you know lots of lots of super role models out there as well fantastic well thanks ever so much alice for for being on the show today i really appreciate it and i've actually learned a, a real lot from this podcast session i've actually been scribbling down a couple of notes whilst you've been talking and i'm just going to do a quick summary for our, our listeners before we we kind of say goodbye um you know but i think it was really key and really relevant especially for businesses or individuals who who, who are out there listening today um that actually making sure that that we are very conscious of our unconscious bias is absolutely absolutely key and if you are kind of thinking or struggling with kind of work life balance i guess you know making sure like alice says having that really strong support network around you how important that is so that you can actually really be able to to focus on your career um you know and know what's important as well but frankly um you know as you said alice you know don't sweat the small 
don't sweat the small stuff. You know, life is too short to be worrying about what you can't control. And none of us can control everything. You know, we're all human beings at the end of the day, um, no matter where we're from or, or, or what, what it is that we do. So, um, you know, it's been, a really, it's been a really, really nice session. It's been really fantastic to speak with you. Um, and I hope that our listeners have enjoyed the show. Um, for anyone who would like to contact Alice or reach out or feel that they'd like to ask any questions, please do feel free to get in touch. Um, I'm going to put everything into the show notes for the end of today's session. Um, they'll be on www.laylamckenzie.com forward slash podcast. Um, but you can also get hold of Alice directly. You can find her on LinkedIn, as, uh, as is the wonders of social media these days. You can also find her on Twitter. Um, but I'll put all the handles into the show notes at the end of today's session as well. So thank you very much again, Alice, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So welcome. My name is Leila McKenzie and you've been listening to Diverse and Inclusive Leaders, the podcast with you every week. You can find us on Apple, Spotify or your favorite podcast app, or you can get in touch as well um, by email or check out our YouTube channel as well. Thanks very much. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for watching the Diverse and Inclusive Leaders podcast. Please do feel free to hit the like button below or if you'd like to receive future notifications, do ping the notification bell here at the side. If you're interested in the audio version only, you can find it on the following streaming platforms. Any extra info and descriptions will be in the links below. Look forward to seeing you soon.